Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. And I get it. You got your marching orders. You have to do what you have to do. But you don't have to be such a dick. Put that on the plaque and hey, good job. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Yes, indeed. And Jonathan. That's me. Today we're talking about the secret life of Walter Mitty. Um, so, quickly, short and sweet going around. What did you think? I thought it was all right. Jonathan? I liked this movie even more than the first time I watched it. Yeah, I really like this movie. I think it is mm-hmm. a good movie. Am I taking the lead now because of how we switched up things? Yes. Or? It is your yeah. movie, so you take the lead. I, th- I think I'm going to do it a little bit differently, and instead of just kind of... Uh, we'll just take it in chunks, I think, and talk about the good bits. That's kind of what so, we do with Big Fish, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> but, all right, so let's start with the setup of this movie. So, like, meeting Walter Mitty, I thought it was really great. Like, um, I think he's a he's an interesting character, just generally, right off the bat. Like, it's not super uncommon to have a, a leading character that isn't, you know, uh, like, super normal and heroic or whatever like that's been done before but i think they really set him up to be uh normal in a very different way where like he has uh you know the whole thing about zoning out and it's uh i don't know i just i I think that it's like it makes for a more interesting character than just a regular like boring character you know what i mean or yeah, like, I think I I somewhat agree with you, but I got to say I think the beginning is kind of my least favorite part and the beginning's definitely slow, but I, yeah. I think to your point of the characterization and setting him up, I think part of the reason it works well is because it's played almost like a comedy setup and this is, you know, this is Ben Stiller playing the character and Ben Stiller directing it. So even though the movie isn't a comedy, he comes from that place. So having a plain character leading your your charge is is pretty common like if you think about another uh ben Stiller movie uh dodgeball like vince vaughn is the least interesting character in that movie because he's the audience insert um and that's sort of how i think walter's supposed to start out mm-hmm. and then he develops as a character from there there's actually a couple moments in this movie that uh uh were surprisingly like they were funnier than they should have been yeah i mean it it definitely has funny moments it's just not a comedy movie. oh yeah for sure I, I would never call it a comedy i'm just saying like yeah this movie pleasantly surprised me in a lot of ways because i knew that i had already liked it but watching it again like uh like especially the setup like the beginning yeah it's super slow but when i was a kid i i did not understand at all like the heaviness that he was going through i guess yeah because like i yeah. watched this what was this 2013 yeah i was like 15 chomping my I bit, mean, dude. Like, i mean i like i was like i thought i knew it i was like oh yeah like he's just bummed about letting i didn't get it now like watching it i'm like oh man like you know i don't like, remember yeah, I don't what got me to watch this movie the first time i watched it because like the premise is not an interesting premise i think it maybe was... just some of the shots in the trailer were cool yeah, I mean, that's I mean, one thing this movie absolutely has in spades that made me want to watch this movie, but I just never got around to it, was the sound. Like, mm-hmm. Arcade, Flo- uh, Arcade Fire. Arcade Fire. <laughs> yeah, Arcade Fire is just fucking killer. I love that song. Oh, yeah, we're, we're I, jumping ahead, but that's my favorite sequence. Of the movie, probably. Yeah, and yeah. then just the visuals in this movie are excellent. Yeah, the cinematography All around, is great. yeah. Even the beginning, I actually put a note here, like surprising cinematography. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that that it, for me, the beginning was not that boring. Like it was slow, but I would never call it boring. No, I I think it's slow, not boring. Yeah, it was just so like, it was so uh, pretty. I don't know, all around. I love the way that this movie does text on Mm -hmm. the wall. Yeah. Like in the scenery in the background. the, The sequence I'm talking about, like wake up is playing, the time quote, or not time, life quote is, uh, you know, scrolling across the wall or floors of various areas. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is really cool. It's amazing. 
I cannot gush more about the visuals in this movie, but uh, like every shot is not wasted. Like every shot has a, a purpose and is like visually appealing. Also, um, it's it's surprising how well it does his um, imagination scenes. Like they're they're competent, um, even though it switches genre so quickly. Yeah, and I love that. Like um, <laughs> when he fought with the uh, the asshole executive, mm-hmm. like that was a surprisingly competent fight. Yeah. This movie just surprised me all around because I just forgot how um, how good it was, like how good the just all of the technical aspects of this movie were. So I just I thoroughly enjoyed the beginning, and then um, this movie had like almost a literal call to adventure, which I thought was kind of funny. Oh, it definitely has a call to adventure, but it's he like knows. literal, like he's literally yeah. like calling to adventure, and I just I don't know, I thought that that was pretty great. Um, an- another thing in the. You mentioned like not wasting shots, but another thing is, um, I talked about this with with Moonlight is like efficiency of storytelling is is important, and this movie does that. It gives you information in ways that doesn't feel like really sweaty, like it's just trying to get that information to you. Like it's it's naturally done. Like uh, so, it establishes his, that his mother keeps his like all his shit, which is going to be relevant later but also uses it as a setup to show that he used to skateboard in a natural way so that when he skateboards later, we're not like, why is this 40-year-old man suddenly very good at skateboarding? Yeah. And he doesn't just have to offhandedly say, well, yeah, I used to skateboard. Like, we were told this in a, in a way that worked in the movie and, and served multiple causes, which is always good. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a lot of that in this movie. One of the weaker parts of the setup, though, I think, is uh, Cheryl. I don't know. Not that her character, it's just like... I, um, I can agree. I just know. their relationship. Yeah, I think that's another thing that feels like it comes straight from a comedy movie, where it's like yeah, the girl he is doting on is always the girl he is doting on, regardless of her characterization or if she has characterization, which Cheryl does to some degree, but she's not like the most compelling character or really gets a lot to do i just would have liked uh, a bit more yeah yeah i felt cheryl was was uh a bit weak mostly just because it, it also to me it didn't make i feel like uh, ted hendrix also for me it was just not my cup of tea because he's just like a, a just a plain bully yeah, character. There, there's there's not much <clears throat> to him i mean it's it's sweet that in the end he it basically is him who decides to put him on the cover mm-hmm. but uh it kind of comes across i don't know as... if he fully gets the choice there they have to give sean o'connell uh weighted consideration they mentioned that earlier in the movie yeah I didn't mind his character just because uh, I I think that a lot of the characters in this movie are simple by like design almost. Yeah, um, I mean it's not about any of them. <laughs> and like his was funny enough. Like, <clears throat> yeah, he right. he works for the movie. I think it's just he's he's pretty flat in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like that in his other roles as well. I feel a lot. Yeah, more. Adam Adam Scott gets sort of thrown into roles like this a lot. Mm-hmm. And he's he should not. I don't know. He he to me he doesn't seem like he's really typecast for like the evil character. Like he's just doesn't. Like, I don't he think seems he's like the goofy bad. Yeah, yeah. Really... He's he's not evil. He's just a funny. He's too dick. goofy to be like yeah an asshole. <clears throat> I don't know. I think he plays an asshole. Too okay. Well in a lot of spots. Yeah, I don't know. I like him as an actor. Because he's the he's the asshole in uh Step Brothers too, right? Yes. But in that one he's goofy in a way that it's like funny. He's goofy in this too though. In, in the in like the daydream sequences, yes. He also plays um he plays a dick in the good place as well. Yep. Yeah. And I don't like yeah. that role either for him. I mean, none of the demons are, like, especially developed in The Good Place. <laughs> yeah. Michael, I guess. Yeah. Spoilers for The Good Place. You ruined it. I can't believe you. I guess that's spoilers for season one, though. Not even the show at large. Anyway, not important. 
Um, uh, and then this is everybody's favorite shot right after the call to adventure. You know, the music kicks in, the life uh, motto mm -hmm. and the cinematography. Again, there's so many points where, like, I just put a note down of me just going, like, ah, oh, damn, like, this is way better. This is way better than I remember. Um, I don't know if you guys movie. can tell. I really like this movie. Yeah. No, it was just good all around. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a good movie. Um, another thing I think this movie does well is the, again, it's not given a lot of time to develop, but I think his family dynamic is pretty good for how little time it's given to develop. Mm -hmm. Like, the mom is convincing as a doting mother that, like, loves her children's quirks and looks after them. The sister character is, uh... is so-so, but there's still some, like, sisterly qualities of, like, it, the back and forth of like I need to get to my audition. I don't think you're seeing this from my perspective. Like, I actually kind of liked her character as well from like a standpoint that she serves the story in in which where she's just terrible with money, and that's like a I want to call it like a theme, but like a little sort of side thing going on where it's just like um, like real life issues are like a part of this movie. And right. so, like, he has to take responsibility. Like, if it uh, it gives her characterization while also sort of like rounding out um, Walter's characterization of just like he isn't this person because he wants to be. He's this person because he kind of has to be. Like, his sister's out here, you know, super excited about Rizzo, you know, and it's like, yeah, but like stuff needs done. Right. So, I kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, it's a very efficiently done movie. Like, information is presented for multiple reasons to either characterize one character or set something up later or characterize multiple characters. Um, like, even the piano is a through point of being um, like a minor conflict of something that needs to get done, but also establishing that there is a piano, characterizing his relationship with his father, or the father's relationship with the family, and also setting up the reveal at the end. Hmm. All very efficient information giving. For sure. <clears throat> All right, well. There's something yeah. I have to mention here. It's very important to uh, the overall podcast. Uh -huh. Do it. But this is something I've not really noticed before, but this is the first time we've had uh, the same actor in movies back-to-back, -to, -back, to my knowledge. Ooh. And that would be Joey Slotnick. Oh, yes, who's in the movie for three seconds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would give it more like ten, but uh, he plays as Steve Wozniak in the uh, last movie we watched. In this, he is an unnamed character who is yes. moving the mother into the retirement home. <laughs> a, a retirement home administrator. Thank you. Uh, That's yes. a name. That is probably... The first back-to-back. -back. Of any kind, I think. Yeah. Um, Amy Stiller is in this movie as well. Uh-huh. Is, again, an unnamed character for three seconds. I wouldn't say an unnamed. She literally doesn't have a name. I'm looking at IMDb. <laughs> Rich's <laughs> friend's mom. Yeah, not cool. a name. <laughs> <laughs> the cast of um, this movie is really good. I mean, Ben Stiller, it's, Kristen Wiig. I feel like Catherine Kristen Wiig, I'm not a fan of. I... I like for this her. role. Really? I don't think she did this role bad in any way. She didn't do it bad. Cheryl just doesn't I have anything like... to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it might not be her fault, but it was one of the roles that I was like, mm. there were a couple characters that I was like, this they didn't really need to exist. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Any, in the, any in the beginning that you felt that way? Uh, I feel like the sister, personally, I don't feel the sister really needs to exist. I disagree just because of, like I said, like, I feel like that just kind of rounds out her character. Or not her character, his character. I mean, you could have the, the dude he works with be goofy as well. I mean, and he plays a pretty... But it, it's not that, it's, it's, it's not that, um, It's not that it, he's just surrounded by goofy people. It's that he has a responsibility to her in a way that he wouldn't have a responsibility to, 
you know, just somebody who he works with. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she does need to do this. And also, I'll just take more of Catherine Hahn than anything. I think she's great. I feel like she was very good in a, a recent Marvel. I, have, I still haven't seen one. I know oh, she's, she's very, it. very good in that. Uh, speaking of back to back, one of the movies I'm considering for next week is she is in. Nice. I don't know what that is. No, you don't know. I mean, that's that's the point of not saying. But also, I, I feel like I need to see how this compares to the original Secret Life of Walter Mitty. The the seventies one. Uh, the was it seventies? I thought it was older than that. To be honest, I don't remember exactly when it was. I just know there's an older. I think it's like the fifties. I think. Oh, it's the forties. Nineteen forty-seven. This movie had to be so much fun to film. I can't even imagine. Um, yeah, I have to imagine it's super different. <laughs> super different? Yeah, the other version. Oh. I thought you were saying uh, the, the process, but yeah. No, no, yeah. So anyways, back to the moment, the call to adventure. He's running through the airport. He's got his briefcase. Um, it's all happening. It's all going on. Um, and then we get to Greenland. Not really, not much happens here, really. But uh, I, th- I thought it was actually just hilarious, though, um, when the when the pilot's like offering to give him a ride, and he's like, "Nah, I just got to finish up this beer." It's just like one of those good moments in this movie where I was like, "Ah." Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's also funny that he's like, uh, "Yeah, I was nervous about the storm, so I uh, need to have a couple beers." <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, Green, you're, you're you're flying right now. Green yeah, is not a not super compelling part of the movie. No, it does it does set up more of uh, he's thinking about Cheryl and she gives him. I mean, not literally she, but she gives him the push to go where he and needs literally to go. hers in a way as well because they do have the phone conversation in that bar, right? Do they? Um, I don't think they have yeah, it right before. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like while he was getting <clears throat> the drink when <clears throat> he got. Yeah, yeah. He talked to somebody. But that's why she sings that song later is specifically because she says, actually says, like, well, I think he was wrong to call you. Well, that. she says that before. Well, he that was way leaves. earlier. Yeah. That was way earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of I, I like the moment where he decides to get on the plane too. I think it's well done where it kind of goes full circle where you get to see um just um his his imagination and then how it actually helped him in this instance. Yeah, I mean I just... so I've mentioned that the wake up scene is my favorite, but all of the all of the music paired to scenes is good in this. I mean, the soundtrack in this movie is just phenomenal. Yeah, I just mean it, it's all it's all used well with the scene. Yeah, yeah. Not just that it's good music. And then uh, let me just get the boat. The boat's another just super uneventful thing. Like it's just here to advance the story. I'm into it. Meet some like whatever people. It's cool. Yeah, you you know, he finds the cake and it has a uh, his next clue. His next clue in it. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. A raging clue, you could say. A clue he yet again does not understand. Yeah. Uh, and then he. I actually really like the Iceland bit of this movie. One because I love Iceland, but. Uh, yeah, the Iceland stuff's all good. Soundtrack again, just amazing. Um, <clears throat> just beautiful biking through. But you know when he hits that sign, <laughs> uh, like I feel like he would not be able to get up after that. He hit that shit so hard. Yeah, and he just had, like, a little paint on. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, like, okay. No. If it bent your tire, you would be, like, out cold for a little bit. Um, Definitely wouldn't yeah. feel great. Yeah. But it was just goofy. But, uh, yeah. Um, also, the, when he trades when he trades that the, the stretch man for the skateboard, nobody would take that. No, yeah, it's that, crazy. It was insane. I, the uh, only way I could think it's it's feasible is like because Trevor used to skateboard a lot and Trevor had multiple uh, skateboards, so I guess if you were enticed by the toy, you could be like, "Well, I have more skateboards." But generally, you're going to be going around on your favorite skateboard. 
No, there's no way. You cannot convince me that anybody would ever take that deal, ever. No, it, it ruined the movie for me, to be honest. It didn't ruin the movie. I just <laughs> thought it was funny. I was like, there's no... No, it didn't ruin movie. the movie, but I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, no one would take that deal in their right movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also thought it was cool, too, to use, like, the one little piece of characterization that you get from him. Not, like, the only piece, but, like, one of the... Like, just little things of just him being able to skateboard, how it kind of saves him when he's got to make it to the Ayesha Fachel. Yeah. And then we get our first uh, our first look at Sean O'Connell. Yes, we do. Not much of a look, but he is there on top of the plane. <laughs> um, which, interestingly, like, uh, while it's about him, I do not think Walter Mitty encompasses this movie. I think Sean Penn playing Sean O'Connell encompasses. I entirely agree, but I also yeah. like the way that they did it, where um, even though he's sort of held on this sort of uh, pedestal, because this movie's all about how it, you know it's a movie about how to live life. You know, yeah. it's not a it's not a secret about how life is. The magazine like that was definitely intentional. This movie is about life in, in a larger sense. Um, I do like how they, they play his character as, like, he's something to strive for, but it's not something, like, that you have to go to to feel, like, ah, uh, how do I word this? Like, they make him mystical, but they don't make him, uh, like, the the epitome of what a person needs to be. Yeah, I, just I, I don't think the movie says you need to be Sean O'Connell. I'm just saying... Sean O'Connell's philosophy embodies what the movie is trying to convey. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he goes to these places without a thought just because he wants to. And it's interesting. And then particularly the snow leopard scene where, he's like, if I like a mm -hmm. moment as me, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he goes and plays soccer because he's like, this looks fun. Yeah, sure. That is cool. He, it's very much, he is the embodiment what the movie is trying to convey and what Walter is sort of becoming. Yeah. You got to bring up the x-ray scene. Well, we're not there yet. We're pretty close. Oh, we got a ways to go. All right. But yeah, uh, the, I also liked when the volcano exploded, like uh, just how, how kind of real their reactions were. Just, he was like, fuck, like yeah. when it was exploding, like they didn't, I don't know. It was just another good moment. Um, and then he goes back to New York. I guess we are there. So uh, yeah, back to excuse New you. And goes the, to uh, L.A. Yeah, he goes to L.A. not New York. Oh no, he goes back to New York and gets fired because uh, she, uh, Cheryl calls him, and then you get the text on the mountain. I think you're mixing up where mm. we are. He goes back to New the... York before Iceland, doesn't he? Or not before yeah. Iceland? Before um, I know. before before he. Before he meets Sean O'Connor. Oh, because I jumped ahead oh, to it. You're, you you're ahead, still yeah. going to ice. Okay, I got you. So yeah, he goes so back to New York, he gets fired. Yeah, yeah. Gets fired. <clears throat> um, again, really not much to say. He gets, he's he like gets in, told to make a plaque. Yeah, whatever he's in New York, not much really happens. Um, uh, well, it, also, it, it, it has the, the loss of the relationship. Because he goes to give the, yeah. the long board bills there that's true and then he runs away like a coward because he hasn't learned anything yeah <laughs> well i mean he's just being a respectful person i actually kind of appreciated that where it wasn't like uh, yeah, he wasn't trying to destroy another he wasn't like prostrating like no oh, no but he still could have like given the kid the gift he wanted to give him instead of he just did. running away he did, he did but he left it on the stoop and ran away but you know what he <laughs> could have about timed that relationship okay <laughs> But yeah, I think that I think that that was less like, because the kid still knew it was his because he had the note. I think yeah. he just didn't want to be an issue for her, with, um, you know, her Ill. potential husband. But he's yeah. also he's making an assumption there that isn't true. But he doesn't. What? I don't think that that's a crazy assumption to make. No. That if I mean, it ends the, up if, being someone who's repairing his. Not even, it could have just as been as simple as, like, Bill was seeing his kid because he has a kid that lives at that house. 
There are sure. a lot of other things that could have explained why he was there. I'm not saying that it's like the best thing. I'm just saying like, he's still a coward. Crazy. He hasn't learned his lesson yet. Because even so, think... he could have still just been, I don't know, friends with this woman he's known for a week. Yeah. He could be, but he could also be like, I wanted more than friends specifically. I don't think that's... Well, I mean, I, I think that he's just thinking in the sense of like, he doesn't want to cause any trouble. Yeah, especially with people. I mean, like, as you get older... Well, especially since their guys. marriage was like yeah. having issues. Like, I yeah, think that you don't want to like ruin. Well, their marriage their was over. That's what she said earlier, but that doesn't mean that it can't. She said there's kind of a thing going on. So, wait, are you saying if you guys have an interest in a woman and it like doesn't pan out, you just nuke that friendship? No, no. Wait, but what? at the same time, if when did you ever say, say that? I'm saying that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, she, he could still like. I'm not saying he should have gone there and. Fucking stolen that, Cheryl away from shit. Phil. I'm saying he could have like not literally ran away from her house and said hi to this woman he is <laughs> ostensibly friends with as he's giving a gift to which also is the weirdest part. He's giving a gift to a child he doesn't really know. Yeah, but that's, that, that's the point. Weird. I think that I think the fact that it, it's not a gift to her, it's a gift to the kid, he's very much so trying to say, like, hey. So let me pitch two Interesting. scenarios. I think to you. he was just probably like, "This is fucking weird. What am I doing?" Let me pitch two scenarios to you, Jonathan. One in okay. which a man gives a gift to a child through the parent which he is friends with, and one in which a man just gives a gift to a child. Which would you prefer, Brennan? Well, he is still friends, but I'm saying that, like, if all right. Here's the thing. You think that it's crazy that he would give a gift to a child. I do as well. I think the fact that he gave it to the kid is more reason not to do it because it, it basically is telling the guy that it's like, I'm giving this gift because I want to be a thing. Like, I'm trying to show that I can be, um, like, a father to this kid. Do you get what I'm saying? I... I think it's a bad situation all around, and I think it's made worse by the fact that he flees at the first sign of Phil, because to me, that would put it in Phil's head that, like, this guy's up to something with really? Cheryl. Yeah, if he, he got really awkward and then fled when he saw Phil. You don't think that's strange behavior? I mean, maybe a little, but I think that that's more comforting than... Uh... Like if and just being just like, friends with someone of the opposite gender? No. Quit making this something that it's not. Yeah, you're you're like you're being no. a bit of an asshole. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying it's weird that he runs away. Instead I don't think it's that weird because it was very clearly a relational like he was trying to take a, a relationship step. Like you don't give kids gifts. It was very much so like yeah. this is your kid. I want to make a deal about this. Like it's not just like it's not just like a thing that you can just be like, oh yeah, no, it's because we're friends and I had this laying around. It's like you can't, you, nobody would buy that. I think it's less weird if he like actually. I think the way he explains the gift is weird. Because what he what he says is, I saw this in Iceland and I thought Rich would like it. That to me is weird and also isn't what happened. I don't think it's weird because, again, it's just showing that, like, you care about her kid. And again, if you, like, but either way, it's not what happened. Yeah, that is kind of weird. He could have been, like, you know, because I, I think... I think like, the story is a little bit crazy. Again, the, the, the relationship, the relationship is moving awkward. faster than it should be because it's yeah. in, in a short movie. But in a realistic scenario, it would be way more comforting to be like, you know, I was... Because she knows about him going to Iceland and doing this shit anyway. If he was yeah. like, I had to skateboard down a hill to get to, was it a plane, a helicopter, whatever the fuck he was getting to, fast enough. Um, and then I still had this skateboard. And I have no use of it because I am a grown man. <laughs> and your child bit, skateboards. <laughs> that is a little bit of a, like, a story to tell, and if he is known for stories. But it, yeah, I see it's a little bit of a story, but she knows all this information. Sure, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Now that I can get behind, I can't get behind the like. I don't. I just. Think I think that scene away. is just weird, you know, in a few different ways. 
Because also the introduction of Phil does nothing for the movie. Again, again, I think that the relationship is weird. That was yes. like one of the things I said was weak at the yes. beginning. Like they, it, yeah. it's not a very well written one. So maybe this is just like an artifact of that. Like it's just that's kind yeah, of like that scene. Cheryl that scene just Gage. doesn't work for me in a couple ways. And I, it's yes, it's the relationship. It's the fact that Phil doesn't need to be in the movie because it creates a one second Hold conflict. On, also, yeah. Cheryl is not a friend. I mean, I agree with you on that point that it's it's a one second conflict it is what it is but like they don't have a friendship really they they had to work no they're starting to have a friendship because even after she's fired they're still talking on the phone she's still invested in what he is doing trying to find sean actually after she's fired uh i don't think she does i don't really yeah yeah. they they don't don't they talk on the phone after they talk on the phone once i believe and she mentions yeah she helps what she can and then she says i'm fired like oh yeah you know that's like the last is when yeah it was it was all about sean but then she also blames him for that because she says you kind of fell off the face of the earth because i think yeah 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 yeah. so i i think i think even in the scope of the movie they're they are having a friendship at that point i agree i Um, just think the relationship moves too quickly i i think that that was a relationship move still but i don't think we're gonna see i mean it has to start as a friendship I think it does in real life, but this is a movie. Sure. And so, like, yeah. I mean, the movie I mean, doesn't all, also doesn't end with them together. They just hold hands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Actually, that, that's but, one of the things yeah, I like. Yeah. Yeah. I like, like, we're saying the relationship they... moves too fast, but it's not like they're together at the end of the movie, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, that scene, I think is weird. I agree. I, th- I think that's I think it's weird least... for different reasons, but. I think, it's, I think it's weird for a lot of reasons, so. <laughs> probably some of those reasons are encompassed in my thing. Yeah. I think that is just the scene that is doing the least in the movie. It's backtracking his character. It's creating a needless conflict with Phil. Like it's, yeah. it's so irrelevant other than the yeah. fact that he gives the, the board to rich. Well, you know what? I feel like you're kind of just your pro Phil in this situation and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> what? Pro Phil. Pro Phil. Oh, I, I was, Processing that is pro F I L L, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, I thought he, I thought he was saying profile, like profile view um, at first. I was like, you're pro filling. There's no way to be pro fill. He's not a character. He doesn't exist. <laughs> He's just me, man. All right. Well, okay. So, oh yeah, another thing that happens when he goes back to New York, he throws his wallet away, talks to his to his yeah, mom. What a shithead move. Stupid. Like, yeah, like that just like didn't make me like Walter at all. Like, I, you know, it wasn't that big of a a thing for me like i it was obviously stupid but i could totally see you know somebody doing that because like he did like the wallet but he's frustrated that he can't find him right and this is this is another thing with that it's the same as the scene in front of the house where he's talking to sean later and he doesn't explain what happens he doesn't say i was frustrated having to find you he just makes the situation worse by being like yeah i I liked your gift but i threw it away it's like explain that like yeah i was angry I was frustrated I got trying fired. to find him. all he had to say. I got, I got fired. And I just would, lost all of my money moving yeah. a fucking piano. And, and that would be also, understandable, but he doesn't do right. that. Yeah, he, he just kind of fucks. <laughs> fucks right off. Because, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a thing you get. And, like, in that scene, you read it as that. And then later, he doesn't say anything of the sort. And it's like, what, what are you doing? I think that might be an issue of them trying to play it for laughs when it just wasn't that funny. It yeah. just kind of is like confusing. But it's like you just, yeah. you just made this character feel bad. Who like? <laughs> like yeah. He took it in stride though. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that was just back to New York. That was just more plot point stuff. Like I don't know, nothing too too character driven. I think that the moment with Phil was supposed to be, but we already discussed how bad that went. And then it goes back to uh, his mom convinces well, him you're missing that... one of the most touching scenes in the movie. Which one? The yeah, elevator scene with his friend. Well, you're yeah. a good boss, Walt. The only characterization that character gets. Yeah, despite <laughs> being kind of, you know, in a lot of scenes. He's in a bit, yeah. Um, not an important yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Um... Yeah, and then uh, then it's just like the montage of him trekking through again. I just think this movie, this movie does text really well. I love it when movies do um, messages or thoughts. Well, like oh yeah, when he's writing in his travel journal and it shows up on the scenes. 
Yeah, and then in this case, his travels journal. So like it it helps because you can see sort of what he's thinking about, and then also it, I don't know, it just it looks great. It's stylistic, and I love it. Perfect, amazing, into it. Um, again, just great views. A little bit of like some humor in there. Uh oh yeah, when they were on the mountain pointing, that was just like, it was way funnier than I remember it being. I just I don't know. The humor in this hit me this time around. Like, the first time I watched this, I would not have called it a comedy at all. I Like, I just, this movie is what let me find Arcade Fire and, uh, oh, the other one, who does Step Out. But, yeah. and But then this time I watched it, I was like, you know what? I'm enjoying myself way more. And then we get to meeting Sean. Um, yeah. Step Out is, uh, is... Is it Jose Gonzalez? I know he's credited yes. with the... Um, I think this is also where I. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we meet Sean, and we already talked about everything in this scene. I yeah, think, so... out of order. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I I do like that he like sort of gets at him how irresponsible it was to put the negative in the wallet, because also mm -hmm. negatives aren't supposed to just be out in the open right like it's in a cardboard yeah, slip yeah. it's but contained you're supposed yeah. to be in like a tin well yeah. i don't know that i don't know if that's enough there's not enough it yeah. isn't but it, it might have been because you kind of learned that he was in new york so he probably right. he dropped expected it to get him that day <laughs> yeah yeah uh it would have been really funny if it was printed with damage <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh so the moment where he doesn't take the photo you know that like you had already talked about before, it was, you know, it's what the movie's kind of about, mm -hmm. you know, living life, living in the moment. A uh, little pretentious, but you know what? I'm into it. I I don't think I've that seems said... pretentious. Really? Yeah. I guess I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'd say self-aware, but like nervous? Because the thing is, word. it's not like he's he's going around like telling people this is his life philosophy. He's just oh, earnestly he... answering the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's being. I'm saying like the movie is being maybe a little bit in this moment, but I was into it. I still don't know that I even think the, the moment is pretentious. I'm glad you think so because, I don't know, I think that I'm a little bit of like a sucker for like, because we talked about this a bit during Lost in Translation where I thought I would like it more because it's one of those movies where like, people who are just like oh yeah, yeah like that so i i don't know i thought that this was a moment where i was like oh it might be striking that chord in my heart but no yeah it was a good one yeah i i, I think i think it's fine i don't think it's pretty i don't know luke did do you read it as pretentious uh not really no i i don't think this movie is pretentious in any point that it's like really pretentious or anything i think there's a point where they're definitely trying to give you a message but i don't think that alone makes them pretentious okay but yeah no it was just like a, a sweet moment because that's also something that uh i from my background like coming in acting that's like kind of what they teach you like how to be a good actor is just to like live in the moment and be just aware of how you are mm -hmm. i was like hell yeah feel good heck. time oh heck. <laughs> oh heck and now we get to the x-ray scene which was very funny i wasn't a fan of it i thought it was funny I don't know. I feel like it just kind of like appeared. You know what I mean? Oh, you didn't like it? I feel like it was very brief. Like, oh, I this... think it was super unrealistic. Like, oh yeah, thought. for sure. Like the fact that you forgot something that yeah, also like wasn't metal, wasn't a weapon, turned into a fight is insane. <laughs> Even if that did happen, like it wasn't metal, wasn't a weapon. And they talk to you about it. You definitely don't fight them on it, or else no, no, no. you know they, they would literally they would just take it and they would put it through the X ray and then send you back through again. But it would it be a such a non issue. They would think you're an idiot, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, like the guy doesn't understand. It's it's a flute, and the well, I mean, it's not actually a flute, but it's basically a flute. Um, yeah. and the TSA agent's like, "What the fuck is this?" You know, you say that, but sometimes they do be like that. Like one time I float. Do you guys know what Bakugan is? Yeah. Okay, I had Bakugan. <laughs> this is just an aside story. I hope the podcasters think that this is funny. I was flying, and it was my birthday in California. And my parents got me Bakugan. 
in a tin like it was like came in this like metal box like like this metal uh container and it had space for like a bunch of bakugan on top and then in the middle there was like a card pack and it had space for like two decks and uh I was like, I was super hyped about it. I liked it. It was great. Um, they got it for me in California because that was when my birthday is, but I flew back and I wanted to bring my, my stuff with me. When I went through TSA, obviously, like, you can't bring a metal box, and I had it in my backpack, and so they stopped me, and they are like, what the heck is this? They acted like it was a bomb, obviously, like, you know, it was in a thing. It was suspicious. But I, as a kid, had, like, no comprehension of, like, that they were worried or anything. And, you know, they open it, and then you see these little plastic balls lined up in, like, like, it was like a, so there's places where you could put Bakugan, you know? So it was, like, a bunch of little plastic balls in, like, a thing that's, like, nested for it. And I could tell, like, their, um, their demeanor, like, all the alarms went off, like, in retrospect. But at the time, I was just like, oh, yeah, it's Bakugan, it's a game. And, like, they have little magnets in them, and when you hit them, they, like, pop off. And they were, they were like they had it in an area and they were like poking at it like really like suspiciously really timidly like they called two other people over and like I I was standing close I guess because I was a kid they didn't like pull me aside or anything so I like picked one of them up when like nobody was looking and I was like yeah and if you roll it and like it popped open <laughs> and they like the guy like flinched for a second he was like oh my god. <laughs> That's, that's, but that's there's, my there's also TSA like, story. There's a difference between a, a toy that scarcely even ranks in the popularity contest of children's toys. Yeah. Like they don't know what that is. Blue. And one of the most recognizable <laughs> instruments in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, and also, again, it was made of wood. It wasn't made of metal. Yeah, it wasn't even made of any metal or plastic. Well, or yeah, yeah, but I mean like Okay, it wouldn't show up on the X-ray, but they they do have. Uh, no, no. So they would see a machine. spot and they would take it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's not like it, again. It's not like he was trying to smuggle anything. It's not metal. He just forgot it there. Like it, in that situation, TSA would think he's an idiot, put yeah. it on the belt, and then just. It's interesting that it. you guys like this. This scene rubbed you the wrong way. For me, I was just like, oh, it's stupid. Dude. I mean, yeah, it's just it's just made for it just, for a laugh. Yeah, it just, it's just it's like, unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. But then we actually get to meet Todd from eHarmony. We didn't even talk about him, but yeah. I don't think his character is super important. I think it's uh, it's uh, it's supposed to show his growth, but I actually don't think that it does that very well. I think it's a very nice um, uh, product placement. <laughs> There's a couple yeah. of product placements. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was... I don't, I don't really have much to say about Todd. I think that it's kind of a useless addition to the movie. Like, the, him being on a dating site, it was okay. Mm. Like, it, it was, was just some characterization of him being timid and, like, not wanting to get... So, like, that was fine. But Todd was just whatever. I mean, I like the actor. Yeah, yeah no, I thought, that, I thought that he did the best with a character that didn't really have to be in the movie, but well, yeah. he, he didn't have to be in the movie. I mean, if they wanted um, that X-ray scene, he had to be in the movie. The only <laughs> dude he knew in L.A. That's true. Um, then we go back to New York again. Yeah. He delivers a negative without looking at it. Now you skipped because he went back to L.A. Yeah, then we go back to New York. But no, we just talked about he went to L.A. You just said he met Todd. That's the end of L.A. Yeah, Dang that's it. basically no, right. where I was. <laughs> um, he roasts Adam Scott's ass. Well, first, I actually like just the teardown of life, just because I think that it goes into one of the themes of, like, like lighter themes. Like, I think that this movie was touching on the impact that the internet has on, like, adult life, you know, like, jobs kind of going away. And then, um, you know, this movie's about how to feel more, like, how to live life to its fullest. And I think that um, in, like, a subtle way, it's kind of pointing that, you know, the internet's maybe, like, takes you out of the moment. And so, like, just seeing life getting taken down and, like, turned into this something else, I thought it was just kind of a nice, like, wrap-up of, like, a light motif kind of going on through the movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest wrap-up is the fact that he he never looks at the picture. He tells oh, them yeah. that. Because it didn't matter. He, he went on this journey to find, he got the picture back, he had his experiences. It didn't matter what the picture was. Which I, I think yeah. is more encompassing of the That's movie. That's what he said. 
And, and then he said that quote that you that you started the episode with. Yeah, that's that indeed he did. A great one. Um, uh, it turns out that it was all a misunderstanding with uh, Cheryl, and then they uh, need to fix the fridge. <laughs> They do what they gotta do. The email from his son was kind of weird because, like, uh, I guess parents do that, but like, what kid would email a dude? Uh, a little bit goofy. I mean, how else is he? Yeah, email. I feel like, like I attached, feel like Cheryl. I feel like Cheryl should have been called and been like, "Hey, I did feel you like that was kid? a fake." No, but she recorded a video for him. You can't send a video over a call. That's fair, but I'm saying like the moment that she got that why wasn't she like hey did you leave my kid a, a fucking skateboard what what the hell why didn't she say hi so you agree yeah. with me during that scene that he should have said hi why did you make yes. it such an issue <laughs> i agree that uh she would God think that it. but i totally understand his viewpoint of like there's a guy there he doesn't want to make trouble so like i don't think that it was that crazy that he did the thing but i also think that people would think that that's like kind of strange basically if i was in that situation i think i might have done the same thing and then if they they called me it was like hey what the hell i would have just been like oh i had to go it was just a quick thing i just dropped it off yeah then you're like you can still maintain you can still maintain that friendship no i don't think that excuse works because he literally doesn't give her time to come to the door i'm done with this uh this conversation (laughs) all right we've already had it four times (laughs) that's fair um, and then, then we get we get to the magazine. We see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we well, talked about cinematography was... in this movie. The cover photo is actually a really good photo. Like it's really yeah. well framed and it is. Like... You, you could imagine that being a cover of the magazine. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was interesting that like I mean obviously they, you know, it's played for. Sean got the perfect shot, and they obviously had all the time to plan it out and uh, set it up. But it's interesting that they actually went ahead and like made a good photo. Yeah, every I mean, movie does. Honestly, I mean, they, they could have went with you know a completely different motif. They could have uh, brought in Barry B. Benson and put him on the very end. There. Just could have been Barry B. Benson on uh, Life magazine. Do I know who Barry B. Benson is? I'm the B movie. Oh, then no, I shouldn't know who Barry <laughs> B. Benson. Is. He encompasses life. What are you talking yeah. about? Very encompasses Well, we went through this movie. Is it time for ratings? Um, so. uh, hold on. Let me see if there's any any tidbits to mention. So, like, this is directed by Ben Silver, mm. which I think is interesting because I don't like. And Stiller directed movies. <laughs> really, you don't like Tropic Thunder? Tropic Thunder is the only other good one, I think. Me, hold on, let me double check. Let me double check myself. I, I feel like all the things that are not great about this movie are a result of the fact that he directed it. Like all of the the tries at comedy that are just kind of contrived. No, I disagree. I, I think really? Ben Stiller. I think some of the comedy influences are good. So I I will take yeah. the bad for the fact that we get the good. Because if this okay. was played for a straight drama without the comedy, I think this would be a way worse. Well, I'm saying like I think that there are other uh directors who could play the comedy in it without going too far so to to tell you some ben ben stiller directed movies he was he directed the cable guy um i don't think you would know what reality bites is tropic thunder zoolander i I don't like zoolander that much hold on um the secret life of walter mitty and zoolander 2 zoolander 2 is bad I really think that Spike Jones would have done great things with this movie had he gotten it. This has really? Spike Jones feel to it, I think. Maybe. I think I think Spike Lee would have done a better job than Spike Jones. Spike Lee. Did I just get the name wrong? No, you didn't. If you're thinking of the horror guy, that's Yeah, okay, I got it right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I like this movie a lot, so I'm not super bummed about anything, really. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good movie for sure. It's, I, I but I think, it. This, I think this, this movie, like, the cinematographer really is, like, mm-hmm. the reason this movie was made. Yeah, so, like, it, was just, it was just a very, it was a looker of a movie. So, like, the fact that he directed it is less of a thing. It should really be, like, who was the cinematographer. You know, I look at this movie and I think Hideo Kojima took some influence. Stuart Dryberg. 
credited for cinematography. Well, great job, Stuart Driver. What else is he cinematographer? That's what I want to ask. <clears throat> he has cinema things. There, there can be no. Because maybe Ben Stiller is just way better than I give him credit for. And he's just. Like, I don't think I've seen it. any movies this guy has done. Very well. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of these. Well, interesting. All right. All right, Luke. What's your overall? It was between a seven and an eight, but I'm gonna have to go with my gut here and say a seven. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like my thing. Brandon, do you want to go? Sure. Uh, I think I'm gonna give this movie a nine. Hmm. It has some things I would change, but overall, I think it's a very good movie. I I want to give it a ten, but. There are things that would be better if it was changed, so I would feel disingenuous giving it a 10. I enjoyed it a lot, though. I mean, do you yeah, feel like you would good. watch it again and again? <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Once, would you watch this movie, like, once a year? Absolutely, but because there's things that I'd change, I'm just going to give it a 9. Yeah, I think okay. I could watch this movie. I think I could watch this movie every two or three years. but Ill not tied for top speed. Yeah. I was trying to get Jonathan to, to... I mean, if you can watch this movie like many, many times and still enjoy it, I think that's a 10 in my I book. think that's 9 and 10. For, for me, a 10 is like, there's nothing that I would change. Yeah, even if it has flaws. Nothing. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, can, I can excuse like a flaw if it's not like... A, like no, that's what I'm saying. Even, even if it has flaws... Some There's flaws you, you have to take to get some good. So, like, yeah. sometimes I'd give it 10 even if it has flaws, but I'm just saying that this movie has flaws that I think that it could get rid of and still have the good. So, like, like, like Jurassic Park and right. T2 have flaws, but they're movies I would probably give a 10. Yeah. I think for me, like your name, for example, I think I went over, I would change the ending to end right when they just see each other, and that would be the ending. Um, but I don't think that makes the choices that that director made to to make the ending like more drawn out. That was his choice, and I think it's still a ten of a ten movie either way. Yeah, because I would watch it again and again and again, just because I don't personally like how the ending went out. Like I like a more bittersweet ending, you know. But that me. All right, so next week is my pick. Um, I don't have a definite pick yet. I'm oh, dare you. between a couple things. I kind of wanted to pick a Brendan Fraser movie because I thought that'd be fun. Um, and I'm also I'm between uh, another movie, This Is Where I Leave You, which is the movie I mentioned that has Catherine Hahn. So, no official announcement on next week's movie as of yet. I will have to make my formal decision. But that is it for this week. Very well. Thanks for listening. That's how it be. See you next time. Jonathan, if you don't say there it is. <laughs>